Okay, we are in chapter 17. Um, we have talked about the equilibrium conditions. We have derived the slope of the two curves. And we know in what kind of diagram we want to discuss these kind of shocks. In the first step, we want to examine the effects of an expansionary monetary policy. Especially, we want to find out whether it's possible to increase domestic GDP by performing an expansionary monetary policy. This is very important because in the initial equilibrium, it is the case that the economy is in a very severe recession. Unemployment rates are very high. GDP level is very low. And therefore, we need to know whether the one or the other instrument is able to cure the problem of this economy, whether it's possible to increase GDP. Of course, in an open economy, it's also to some extent of interest how the exchange rate reacts. So starting point of our analysis is point A, where we have an equilibrium in the economy. Uh, GDP in situation A is very low and unemployment rates are pretty high. We want to find out what happens if the central bank increases money supply. In case that we have some doubts, we have to look into the equilibrium conditions. So we know money supply increases. Hence, we have to go to the IS-ZZ relationship and check whether money supply is included in this relationship. This is not the case. And therefore, the ISZZ curve does not shift. What about the LMZZ curve? Yes, there is an M included in the LMZZ curve. We want to find out whether the curve shifts to the left or to the right. In case that money supply increases, the left-hand side of this equation increases. Therefore, GDP also has to increase so that the equal sign holds the LMZ curve has to shift to the right. This is also mentioned here in this bullet. Like if nominal money supply increases, the LMZ curve has to shift to the right. Let's perform this step. So the LMZ curve shifts to the right. We have to look for the new intersection of the LMZ curve with uh, the old ISZZ curve. And you can see here the effects on GDP and the exchange rate. So an increase in money supply is able to cure the problem of the economy. So in A, there was a very high unemployment problem and the um, central bank is able to increase GDP and therefore to solve like the problem of this economy. The exchange rate increases. This implies that the domestic currency is depreciating. So we have a depreciating here of the domestic currency so that exports increase and imports are down. We call this effect a positive expenditure switching effect. Due to the fact that the exchange rate increases and this depreciation of the domestic currency occurs, the foreigners are going shopping in our economy. And the domestic people are not shopping abroad. So this change in the exchange rate has an effect on exports, but it also has an effect on imports. Exports increase, imports decrease. We call it a positive expenditure switching effect. So it is the case that the foreigners are pulling our economy out of recession. We call now. Let's have a look and confirm these graphical analyzers by performing formal analyzers, like we want to compute some multipliers. We want to find out 
is it really the case that GDP increases in case that the central bank increases money supply? Once more, like we have to think about the two equations, we are already working with the ISZZ equation. You can see here that the foreign interest rate is included. And we are also working with the LMZZ equation, also in equation 5a, uh, the foreign interest rate is included. We would like to write these two equations into matrix notations and therefore we have to solve the equations in a way that we sort the endogenous variables on the left hand side of the equation and the exogenous variables are collected on the right hand side of the equation. And at this point it is really important that you know what kind of variables are endogenous and which variables are exogenous. Left hand side the endogenous variables, right hand side the exogenous ones. So in the first equation uh, we put uh, C1y on the left hand side pops up here with a negative sign. Furthermore we put minus nx1y on the left hand side pops up with a positive sign here. Also, the exchange rate is endogenous. We put plus NX3E on the left-hand side, pops up with a negative sign here on the left-hand side. All the other signs stay the same. With uh, respect to equation 5a, we are putting D0 on the other-hand side of the equation. D0 pops up with a negative sign here. And when we put minus d2r star on the other hand side of the equation, it will pop up with a positive sign here. Now we are ready to write this relationship into matrix notation. So we are collecting all the coefficients in the coefficient matrix. So the 1 minus c1 plus nx1 here. So minus nx3 there, d1 here, and uh, the second equation does not depend on the exchange rate. Therefore, we have zero times the exchange rate in the second equation, which is mentioned here, zero times the exchange rate in the second equation. All the exogenous variables are collected in the solution vector. So once more in matrix notation, we have the coefficient matrix in the first position, then the vector of the two unknowns and the solution vector to the right. Now we take the total differential. And in this step, it is very important that we know what kind of letters symbolize a parameter and what kind of letters symbolize a variable. We are just writing a D in front of a variable and but not in front of the parameters because we are assuming that the parameters are constant. Parameters do not change. Therefore, like the change in a parameter would be equal to zero. Only variables can change. In this step, it is very important that we know what is a parameter, what is a variable. Great, we have uh, taken the total differential. We wrote a D in front of each variable. For example, here it is very important when it comes to the total differential of the term minus C1T that we write a D in front of T because T is a variable, C1 is a parameter. Like also here, nx2 y star, y star is a, a variable. We write a d in front of the variable, but not in front of the parameter nx2. In the next step, we want to find out how does an expansionary monetary policy affect GDP. So the only variable which will change is money supply money supply increases 
all other variables are kept constant so that their changes are equal to zero. In the next step, like a lot of parameter, a lot of variables disappear because of the fact that we are assuming that these variables are constant, their changes are equal to zero. All these terms drop out. Only DM is positive. The central bank is increasing money supply. So we want to compute the income multiplier after an expansionary monetary policy is performed. From the graph, we know that dy dm should be positive because we saw in the graph when the central bank is increasing money supply, it should have a positive effect on GDP. GDP increased from YA to YB. So this relationship should be positive. So once more, uh, the elements in the solution vector will collapse. Only the money supply increases. All other variables are constant so that their changes are equal to zero dm increases. In case that we want to compute the effects on GDP, we have to consider that GDP is located on the first position of the vector of the two unknowns. Kramer's rule tells us, take the solution vector like this zero and dm and insert the solution vector into the first row of the coefficient matrix. So you can see here the zero and the dm in the first column because of the fact that um, we should substitute the first column with the elements from the solution vector. Afterwards, we should compute the determinant of the changed coefficient matrix and we should divide it by the determinant of the unchanged coefficient matrix. So these two lines here, which are given in this part, these lines indicate that we should compute the determinant. These lines are not absolute signs. Furthermore, it's also the case that these lines are not square brackets. It indicates that we should compute the determinant. How is the determinant de computed in the 2 times 2 case? We have to compute the product of the main diagonal and subtract the product of the side diagonal. So 0 times 0 minus dm times minus nx3. In the denominator, 1 minus c1 plus nx1 times 0 minus d1 times minus nx3. Now it's a case that we have to consolidate some terms, like the zero terms drop out, and furthermore, there are two negative signs in the numerator. So these two negative signs neutralize each other. And also in the denominator, we have two minus signs and these two minus signs, they neutralize each other. We get dm times minus nx3, d1 times nx3. nx3 cancel out, cancels out. When we put dm on the other hand side of the equation, we get dy over dm is equal to 1 over d1. All the parameters are positive so that the fraction on the right hand side is positive and therefore the income multiplier after a monetary expansion is positive. So when the central bank increases money supply, GDP will increase. Great. Let's have a look at the exchange rate multiplier after a monetary expansion. Also, this relationship should be positive because we know from the graph 
that when the central bank is increasing money supply, the exchange rate is increasing from A to B. So there should be a positive relationship. Now we have to consider that the exchange rate is located here, like on the second position of the vector of the two unknowns. Kramer rule tells you take the elements from the solution vector and insert these elements in the second column of the coefficient matrix. Therefore, on slide number 21, you can find a zero here and a dm here, like the elements from the solution vector are inserted into the second column because the change in the exchange rate is located in the second position of the vector of the two unknowns. Let's compute the determinant. 1 minus c1 plus nx1 time dm minus d1 0 and then 1 minus c1 plus nx1 time 0 minus d1 minus nx3. Also here we have to think about the negative signs. So we have a negative sign here, a negative sign there. These negative signs will neutralize each other. When we put this dm on the other hand side of the equation, so when we divide by dm, we get de over dm is equal to 1 minus c1, which is positive, plus nx1. And then in the denominator, d1 times nx3. Like the whole expression is positive, so we have confirmed here that an increase in money supply leads to a depreciation of the domestic currency. Overall, let's sum up. We have looked at an expansionary monetary policy and the central bank is able to influence the GDP level uh, by performing an expansionary monetary policy. Therefore, the central bank has an instrument which is able to cure the underlying problem of this economy uh, the central bank is able to fight the recession and the central bank is able to fight against unemployment. In the next uh, chapter, we want to check whether uh, the expansionary fiscal policy is also effective in increasing GDP. But let's make a short break here.